Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. Today, it's Dependent Care FSA. How does this thing work? What is it? And ultimately, is this thing gonna save me money? If so, how much? We go over all of that, so stay tuned. All right, first, before I go into the details, I just wanna let you know, I think these Dependent Care FSAs are a great deal. All right, let's get into it, okay? Dependent Care FSA, what exactly is it? It is a pre-tax account benefit that's offered by your employer used to pay for eligible dependent care services. These expenses are used for your dependents that are younger than 13, a spouse that potentially is unable to work or care for themselves and you're paying for that care, or an adult dependent like a parent uh, unable to care for themselves. And you have to claim them on your taxes. So the eligible expenses, uh, they're pretty straightforward, like daycare, preschool, pre-kindergarten, babysitting, nanny expenses, before and after school care, day camps, can't be like an overnight camp, or care for your spouse or relative who's physically, mentally incapable to care for themselves like a parent as well at, that lives in your home. All right, what else do we need to know about this thing? Uh, it can only be used if both you and your spouse are working or in school. And you're like, well, how are they gonna know this? Because it's gotta be on your tax return, that's why. So uh, when we file the return and someone's not making money, then you, this is all gonna be unfortunately taxable. It's not gonna be pre-tax. That's the whole reason why we set up these dependent care FSAs. And I'm gonna show you that benefit here on the next slide. Um, these are a use it or lose it type of deal. So you're gonna have to declare how much you wanna put into this FSA. And if you don't use that amount throughout the year, you kind of lose that money. There is an exception for 2020, 2021 um, that you can kind of roll it over to the next year. Uh, but generally speaking, it's use it or lose it. If you're divorced, only the custodial parent can use the dependent care FSA. Let's see, need to determine the amount withheld from paycheck. Like I said before, they use it or lose it. So like at the beginning of the year, when you set up this dependent care FSA, you gotta kind of like let the plan know, hey, I wanna contribute $5,000. And, and then you're kind of like stuck on that, unfortunately, until like the next year. So you have to determine that like before, or sorry, when you set up the dependent care FSA. Um, but generally speaking, when you're going to like preschool or daycare or anything like that, you kind of already know how much you're gonna be spending for the year. So it's kind of easy to do there. Um, only withdraw the amount in the account, unlike the FSA. So you can only take money out of the dependent care FSA up to the amount that you've actually put into the account. You can't like, let's say you've contributed $1,000 for two months or something like that, and you need to go pay a bill of like $2,000 for daycare. Now nah, you can only pull out the $1,000. Um, let's see here. Contribution limits. So how much can you put into this dependent care FSA? So those, there they are. For 2021, the limits are uh, 10,500 if you file a single or joint. Uh, and if you're married filing separately, it's half. So how much does this thing save me? Um, I'd say a decent amount. It really depends on your tax bracket, but let's take a look at example of one of my clients, okay? They're married, they have two kids, two dependents. Um, they make about 90,000 a year. They're taxable after their um, deductions are 66,000, right? So what is their tax brackets? It's 12,000 with the Fed and they're in California here. So they got a 6% tax bracket with California. So how much do they save? If they put that $10,000 into dependent care FSA and they're paying for preschool with this thing, right? They're gonna save 12% of that 10,000 with the feds and 6% with California. So it's about a $2,000 roughly savings by using this dependent care FSA. And so if you are paying regardless out of pocket for daycare and you are offered this as a benefit through your employer, I think this is a no brainer to use. So um, again, I think these things are a great deal. All right, well, that's it. I think these things are a great deal. If you got this, uh, as a benefit through your employer and you got dependent care expenses that you're already paying for, I think it's a no-brainer. You get one of these things set up. If this was helpful, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.